quick review of the um, introduction, which is the introduction that I gave yesterday, which is I think fundamental to the whole safer probably to life. And that is that when we talk about Selim we're not talking about, uh, Selim Elohim, man is created in the image of Hashem. So we're not just talking about like an uh, interesting fact, or we're not even talking about, as I always thought, um, a commentary on human potential, or Selim Elohim, or godly. It's, it's something much more than that. Realized yesterday, and that is that Akash um, Baruch created the whole world um, in order to be a toiv umetiv. The ultimate in the hatava of Akash Baruch is when you can actually be mated. Right? That was the point that I was bringing out yesterday. If, if you're, if Akash Baruch would not have created the world, say all these Sufri Kabbalah. Because Baruch would not actually have created a world, Nasiya, the world that we live in. So um, his, his um, Tov Kivyachal would have been theoretical. And uh, theoretical Tov is not Tov yet. It's not Tov Gomor. So as much as we can understand, this is basically the, the basics of every Sefer Kabbalah. Each one has a different Derek, a different Mahalot, and gets extremely sophisticated. But just the Yisod of it is, is clear. Um, in the, how, how does HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we learned yesterday, how does HaKadosh Baruch Hu do this toy in the world? How does it happen? Right. So it happens a number of ways. It rains. Sometimes one falls from Shemayim. This is a practice. There's a lot of different um, involvements of Hakadosh Baruch Hu interacting with this world in order to toy who make it. The Iker that Hakadosh Baruch Hu did is he created something called the Basar Vadam. And Basar Vadam are executive employees, and there's a lot of things you can do. Like if I have a corporation, I can put the air conditioning on, I can make paint the walls nice, I can do a lot of nice things. But the Iker is the the staff. The staff is those that bear the look, the resemblance, the kochos, uh, executive kochos of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Executive means able to execute. Right? The, the executive kochos of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and that's Basar Vadam. Adam Arish and Chava, Zachar Nekeva, even together. Uh, the, the ultimate Tzalem Alekim. So when we talk about being a Tzalem Alekim, being created with Tzalem Alekim, it's not, a, it's, not a, um, it's, not, it's not so, it's not as important to talk about what that, what that says about us. It's, what, it's, it's us as part of the Malchus of Hashem and the total manifestation. There's the job here. We're the mechanism. Uh, hmm? We're the mechanism. We are the mechanism. It's very similar to Malachim. Very similar to Malachim, just a bigger job. And a job because the Malachim, you know, all, all the way down, there's, it is very similar to the Midos, and it's Kolo Kolo Midos. The Midos, I mean, when we talk about, is a very important thing to understand also. When we talk about the Spheros, which is another way of saying Midos, what we're talking about, Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hoi, Yisoy, Malchus, what is it? What do what, what are those spirits? We know what they mean. I said, we know what they mean. What, what, what is it? Um, it's, it's, these are the, um, like, when Akash Baruch Hu created the world, there's so much to Akash Baruch Hu. Maybe he has billions of Bidos. Maybe he has an infinite amount of Bidos. But these are the Bidos that he's using to, to run the world. These are the, the, the covenantal bylaws of, of, of the world is that, okay, what am I going to take out of my bag, Kivyachal, and use that to run the world? The answer is I'm going to, I'm going to work here with Chesed, Gvorit, Tiferes, and that's how you say Malchus. So that, those, those Midos, those, those Midos, or in other languages, Hashem, Hashem, Kel, Rachel, Mechanon, there's so much more to Hashem than anything like that. As we pointed out yesterday, Hashem also does the Kama. But these are the worlds, that are, these are the, these are the, the rules, the, the bylaws, the, the and, and, and how are these going to be enacted? How are the how are the Zion spheroids going to be enacted through the behavior, acts, deeds of Selim Alekim humans? So when we talk about Selim Alekim, we're talking about a very executive position with a very very clear, detailed, and intense job description as clear represent, re representatives. 
Do we have Bechir HaKavshis? We have Bechir HaKavshis. I, I, I had a thought last night, I was talking to somebody, that everybody learns that the reason why we have Bechir HaKavshis, I'm sorry about you, <laughs> everybody learns that we have Bechir HaKavshis because otherwise there wouldn't be any Sechar onish. That's, that's, uh, that seems to be a common thing everybody learns. If you don't have a Bechir HaKavshis, so what's Shaykh onish, what's Shaykh Eri Yibin Sechar? It feels wrong to me, philosophically. It seems trite <laughs> that that we should have a Bechir HaKavshis because we should have Sechar onish. I mean, it, just we, we have Bechir HaKavshis because we're at a very, very high level executive position. And you have to have, if you're going to, uh, if you had a corporation and you were going to send somebody out on a high level, uh, if you're the president and you're sending out the Secretary of State, uh, you have to give him an authority to make some decisions. But it's okay, make all the decisions, you know, there's, but, but he has to have some power of decision. He has to have some Bechir HaKavshis because otherwise there's no koach. What's the koach? So um, will he be rewarded if he, said, if he decides right? Will he be... Have, uh, uh, penalized if he decides wrong, of course. But but the, the point: will he be promoted? Will he be demoted? Be yichya, be yavus, you know, be ba'esh, be ba'bayim. But but the bechir, the etzem, it's, it's superficial to think that that's the the, the essence of bechir achavshus. The essence of bechir achavshus is I'm a tzalabal Do you hear this? Yeah, amazing. That's 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 the essence of it. That's the importance of it. Is that I'm an important person. I'm a, 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 and, and I also explained yesterday, I want to review one more time, that Tzalabal Akim is not limited to Jews, necessarily. Everybody's a Tzalabal Akim. Um, every, everybody was, is the children of B'nai Adam. But the difference is, is that when this was pointed out to everyone, um, maybe around the time of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, when it was pointed out to everybody, nobody was, nobody was accepting of that rule except for the B'nai Yisrael. So what makes B'nai Yisrael different is that they accepted the role. They understood the responsibility of being B'tzal and Malikim. It's not that they are B'tzal. And of course that created a, a different relationship uh, in Kala Yisrael of B'nai, of B'nai B'chari Yisrael. Okay, you know, Lech Teich Acharai Bamidbar Baris Loisarua. And you accepted the, the, the mandate, the, 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 the Mardukim mandate of of being B'Tzal HaMalikim. So Tzal HaMalikim is not just a description of the importance of the human being in terms of my, my, my potential. It's, it's the whole thing. It's the whole reason why we're created. It's all raison d'etre. There is no, it's, 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 this is our position. And therefore, it, it, and the position is all part of the Zion Spheros. We are, we have to have within us the ability to do chesed, gevur, tifaris, netzach, hoi, jesed, malchus, because otherwise we're not stamp, you know, clone stamps of a Baruch Hu. That's what Salamalakim means? That's what Salamalakim means. It means the Zion means. So says the Ramak Mephorsh. If you, by the way, if you take, if you, oh, thank you for saying that, because if you, we, the, the, the velt, the yeshiva shavelt, there's parak aleph of the, uh, the Torah Dvar. That's what's learned. The rest we put away, because it's like every other Kabbalah safer. But, if you learn about uh, Perak's base to Perakhes, um, it starts, Oidly, I saw them doing a lacoin beside me to Sakhesa, beside me to Sakhesa, as it were. Exactly, exactly um, if you look at the end of the Savior, which is traditionally skipped, it's all about finding those spheros within us, because, so there's a thing called, um, maybe you're familiar, there's something called the Shir Koima. As I'll even speak about um, the sheer koima. Sheer koima means the stature, the height, the posture of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The, 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 if you if you look at the Kabbalistic charts, so there's the Keser, there's Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, that's a, uh, it, it, it looks like a it looks like a body. So that's called the sheer koima in Kabbalistic literature. Chesed is on the right, the Gvura is on the left, etc. Um, Tiferes is in the middle again. That's a hoid, two legs. So that's the that's called sheer karma. Obviously, it's it's a muscle, but it's just a way of uh, of remembering it. That's where the mug and David comes from, and all, all of these different um, pieces <laughs> um, pieces of Klai Israel, the images of Klai Israel. Even other religions um, have taken some of this imagery um, from from Klai Israel. 
So the the um, the sheer koima is from a kabbalistic point of view. The sheer koima is lamala, and the sheer koima is lamato. Meaning, uh, Nefesh Chaim speaks about this in Arichus that there's the sheer koima lamalo, which we have no real concept in, I guess. But then there's the sheer koima lamato, which is within us that we have a concept in. So Chaim Elosh brilliantly and famously says that. Um, that, that, that we are a mushal to what's going on in Shemayim, not, not vice versa. Like that, if you want to bring a mushal about life, life is the mushal. Life is a mushal to what's going on in Shemayim. So if you want to understand what's going on in Shemayim, the chesed of Hashem, so take a look at our chesed, you can understand a little bit about Hashem's chesed. And so it's, it's, it's every, everything's upside down. It's not a sheer koibo labat, this is Rechaim Lodge, the parakal, the shar alif, the parakhesed thing. That the, the shir koiba labata is the bushel to the shir koiba labala. The point is, it's all bakbil, it's all parallel. And it has to be parallel because it, this, is, this is where we get trained um, in how to be um, the Tselem Alakim, how to have that kind of an executive position. What we're being charged here with is that executive position. That's what Tselem Alakim means. Very important. I, I always say it's just very important. To, uh, why, why is it beginning to learn at level? Because it's time to internalize this kind of. Uh, idea, like just to know what our position is. It's not, it's not a, uh, d there is no such thing as a Pasha to you. What, what does that mean? It's like a Pasha to general. It work. Okay, so let's learn inside a couple of words. Paragrishan is the introduction. It doesn't yet start with the, um, with the mitos. Ha'adam roi shi yisdam elokainai. Everybody knows that the uh, Ramak was the was the um, was the Rebbe of the Arizal. Lashon of the Vilna Gon is that where the Ramat finishes, that's where the Arizal starts. Meaning, it's a, it's all based on that. The Ramat, by the way, was a Talmud. Where he get it from? He was a Talmud of some Alkabitz. Always bothers me that I read some you know, it says that he was the Bechaber of the Luchadodi. That is the that is uh, Kaver. Um, you know, <laughs> like, like, um, like I knew I had the source of knowing. Uh, or Putner, let's say, you know, many generations later. So, you know, Putner was uh, wrote the Pachad Yitzchak, or Putner was the Rosh Hashiva, or Putner was the Gadol Andor. So, like, uh, like, imagine if you go to his cavern, it says the Machaber of the Nigid Bovavi Bishkanek, <laughs> which he was. But, uh, but like, so, like, wh like, why is the Lachadodi like the whole? Uh, it was, it was the Rebbe of Shavalkovitz was the Rebbe of the uh, of the Rabak. It was the Rebbe of the. Arizal, uh, who is the rabbi of uh, anything which is today considered uh, Sisrei Torah and so it has to, has to be through the Arizal. But, um, so his, his lush is Ha'adam Ra'oi Shi Yisdam So let's be Medayik, as I have never been in previous years. Ra'oi Shi Yisdam means it is befitting for a person to um, act in the same way as his creator, it's not a, just a fact, it's right. It's, it's matim lo. Right means matim lo. If the whole reason that we were created is to be able to pull off this executive uh, uh, behavior and to really do some chesed here in this world and do some midos and make a kiddush Hashem, so Kiddush Hashem in the most profound daily level. So it's 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 roy if we have all of this equipment and we don't um, we're not aware of it or we don't use it properly or we choose wrong. So um, it's chaval. Uh, well, for what were we created? So roy adam it's it's surpassed. It's it's befitting for a person. She's damalikayim. Roy is a is a very important word over here. And if by if you do do that, azia beside hatsura ha'el yoyna. Azia then, yeah beside hatsura ha'el yoyna tzalamudmos. Rechaim, what's hatsura ha'el yoyna? What's hatsura ha'el yoyna? Serious. Hatsura ha'el yoyna is the famous, is the sheer kaima. That's what the, that's what the words mean. So the, the, the Tzura al Yaina refers to Keser, Keser, Kuru, Tiferes, that's a Chodesh, Ay Balchus. 
that is what's the Zero Yoda. So it's not like you've got to be like God. It's we have to incorporate within us all of the spheres of the of the of the Shir Kaima. And that's so it's the, the side Sura Hel Yoyna, the side Sura Yoyna are the spheres, as opposed to the, the, the if you if you look at a person, you look at a person um, superficially, you mean the person on the street for the first time, the last time. So what do you see? You see that uh, he's dark, he's light, he's heavy, he's thin, he's uh, white, he's black, he's gray, his hair is this, you know. You see very a very superficial part of the person, you see the punim, the punim, that's what's available to everybody, not the punim. So the, 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 it's, it's, it's only after knowing somebody for a while that you get the side. The, the side is the secret part, the hidden part, the, the, the part that you can't know right away. The side, sorry, I'll hear had like a very interesting, Thing happened to me it was stuff my mind. I went when I was in the United States, so I, I drove with my son to um, from New York to Buffalo, New York, it took seven hours you know, so, you know, towards Niagara Falls. So um, because I wanted to go visit my mother's cabin, which was in Buffalo, New York. So um, I was the rub of Buffalo. I grew up there. I was, I was a rub there for ten years and. Um, and the uh, old shul was built up uh, over that at that time. There was like 60, 70 families from zero. That it was a dead neighborhood built up families about like shul. It was a very interesting community that didn't have enough love. But I went back there, so the, the shul's still there. This there, they they have a new rabbi. The shul which was very nice, big simcha. They actually have a rabbi. Oh, Twelve people there, but two people. There. So um, so I went to down in Shafaris, I met the, everybody there. Wives even came and they said hello. It was a very, very nice, very nice uh, thing. And uh, introduced to the rabbi and uh, I went further to the to the basic course. So um, I'm on the mailing list of the shul, which is obviously extremely exciting. But <laughs> I'm on the mailing list of the shul. So uh, so I get a um, so the rabbi blogs every few days. He blogs. So the, so the rabbi writes that we had two. Um, uh, he said, today in, in the show we had two very important guests. Um, he goes, Shri Jiddha Siva. We had uh, Rabbi Yaakov Haber, who many people know, a long time rabbi in the show, a gifted rabbi, and a blah, 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 author of this, an author of that. And then in the afternoon, a great nice room, then in the afternoon we had a certain Hasidic rabbi came, um, and uh, he was passing you from, from Toronto to New York, and I stopped there for Mincha Mar, and this rabbi came, and, and uh, the two important guests of the show. So he writes, um, I was much more impressed with the Rebbe than I was with Rabbi Haber. <laughs> I was not know about the mailing list. That's <laughs> more impressed. So, and, it is, and I'm trying, he writes in this blog, I should read this here. <laughs> Tell me what you think about it. He says, and, I, and, he says and, I, and I'm wondering to myself, like, um, why, why am I more impressed with this Rebbe who I really don't even know, and I don't know what he does. He does it. I know all about Rabbi Amor. Can't stop hearing about him. But I read his books. I was like, well, why, why, why am I more impressed with the Rebbe than I am with Rabbi Amor? It was his kasha and his blog. So, um, like, I'm very, feeling very uncomfortable at this point of reading. <laughs> like, how, like, where, where are we going here? So, um, so his terrace was, and it was tied into the parsha even. Uh, his terrace was that uh, the Rebbe came with. Um, with uh, an entourage of, uh, of uh, Hasidim. He came with eight ten Hasidim, and he was wearing a, uh, a, f a fur coat, even though it was 95 degrees <laughs> outside. And, uh, you know, it, it was all, you know, the way he dabbed. And, 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 uh, and uh, Haber came with his teenage son. I mean, if somebody comes to show with their teenage son, that's better than coming with uh, 20 chassidim, in my opinion. But uh, So he said, I realized that I would just be taken by the chassidius and not by the plebeius. So I think at the end there was a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if it was, then what's he dissing the rabbi for? I just didn't understand like, the whole, the whole uh, email. But uh, what the, the, the kuta here is that I'm trying to bring out. Uh, what do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> Like Born over there. What? Maybe it's a right of brother of Shinab, like, you know, a lot of and Yeah, Lachara. <laughs> uh, entourage is everything. If 
there's any volunteers? Appearances. Appearances. <laughs> I'm looking for uh, <laughs> looking for that type of thing. Appearances but, are everything. Mm -hmm. Appearances are everything. Yeah. Well, the the, the point is that that um, the reason I'm mentioning this over here is the point is there's the pun and the name. Whether it's true of him or true of me or not true, I'm just saying it as a vice of Shahi the last couple of weeks ago. But uh, the 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 the, the would you would you see would you see the um, so so unbelievable the Chavos Avavos writes in Shara Bechina that if you walk through the forest and you notice the the um, the pilpleim of nature of of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and you see you watch the, the the ladybug clean the plant and you watch the dew come up in the morning and you see how the how the, the just the natural um, malchus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's majesty, it's Mamish majesty of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So says the Chavis Avavis, you're seeing the Chetzonias, you're not yet seeing the Pneumias. You're seeing something every scientist can see, you're seeing every botanist, because anybody with eyes can, can see it. Not that it's not important to see, but you're seeing the, 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 the beauty, the external beauty of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You're not yet understanding the inner beauty of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, says the Chavis Avavis, until you understand the Tzura Halyan. Because the Surah al Yaina, when we're talking about the Surah al Yaina, yet, yet as deep as that is, as remarkable as it is, but you're not catching the Pneumius. And the Pneumius is that, you know, plants die, ladybugs get stepped on. The, the, the Pneumius Hadabar will never die. If, if, so when we're talking about a Kaddish Baruch Hu, we have the schus to learn about the Pneumius because the Svarmar Megala to us. The Pneumius of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not only that, but we're, we're, we get to know, understand what our own Pneumius is based on. So we're not talking about um, just the outside Sura, which would be beautiful <coughs> unto itself. We're not talking about the entourage, if you will. We're talking about the, the <coughs> Pneumius, however, which may or may not be beautiful. Because Hadin is not always beautiful. Uh, there's Lama Dvav Tzadikim that are not always beautiful. And they're not always wearing big, beautiful fur hats. Not that, not that I'm, uh, I'm just I'm, I'm saying that it's not loud Africa. Like the 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 shade kite of of it is chashu, but it's not yet the 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 essence of the thing. That's that's the uh, point. So ba'azia beside hatsura hal yoynat selim utmos. We need to, as we go on, work out what is called selim and what is called mos. Salmenu kid musenu. What's the positive shot? Somebody tell me a positive shot. What's the difference between Salem and Tos? Salem means what? Salem? Yeah. Demus means comes. What's the shorter of the word Demus? No man. And the shorter of the word Salem? Salem. So the shape. You look at a you look at a, a, a shadow. You don't get too much about the personality unless you're really smart. Not much to see there. You don't even get the you don't even get the smile. You don't even get the the, the details of the body language. You just see a shadow. So selamalikim and tmus. Sel kel. It's all of us, but sel kel. So sel, like a shadow. So we need to we need to understand Solomon to us. If it would be that a person would be dome. Now here you have a little bit of a hint to the word. Begufo, doma seems to be in the goof, like, like Moshe was saying, velobipulos, and not amidos, so you would have um, dumus, a little bit the opposite, dumus without selam, harehu, powerful words, machziv hatsura. It would be machziv the tzur. What's machziv mean? Deceive. Why? Machziv hatsura means, like you, you can imagine that, uh, like, let's assume that in my uh, case, the guy with, um, the Rebbe with all of the uh, tzura, presumably had a lot of pneumias too. Um, but if you have the chatsonius and you don't have the pneumias, that's pretty disgusting. So that's called machziv So If you've got the look, and you don't, if you, if you talk the talk and you don't walk the walk, 
that's already machziv hatsura. Here you have the, the whole hanhaga of chesed gvur. It's far as you have the whole sheer koima adam, but you're not real. It's empty. Empty. So if it's not real, that's not just you're not working to your potential. It's it's machziv hatsura. You're taking a tsura and you're being machzivit. What does that mean? That you have tsura without. Well, look, a yoimru alav, and they will say of him, tsura noya umaisim kuru. Looks like the real thing, but when you get into it, he's not the real thing. The real thing being, the, the definition of the real thing is that um, it doesn't have the midos of Hashem that he was created with and for to be able to do the chesed. So again, let's not lose, let's not lose our place here. The, 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 the purpose of the creation of the world is chesed. So it means to say mostly that we need to do chesed. And if a person has got the whole look, but when you, you can't count on him to do you a favor, to put it very simply, or he's not willing to go that extra mile, we're going to learn about how, how far that mile really is. Um, but in, in, in um, Basically, he's machziv the tzura. You, you look like a big tzaddik, and you look like a big philanthropist and a big balchesa, but you're really not. It's a failure to actualize the potential. Yeah, but therefore, and the, the, this is the way they put and therefore, you're machziv the tzura. <laughs> the failure to actualize the potential is nebuch. Oh, you could have been so great. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that you, 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 you're hired for a job, you're given all of the tools, you're given the executive jet, you're given the whole business, you know, the, the executive decision making, and you don't do it. So, yet you're, 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 you're being no hay with, with kavod, so that's machziv the tzura. Hmm. Yomer olav tzura noe, umaisim kuhurim. Sharei Iker, I don't know who this Vyomer Olav is referring to. Who's going to say on him? Vyomer Olav, they will say about him, Tzura no Maisekurim. I think he means the, um, the uh, nature, trees, the, the, uh, the flora and the fauna. Malachim. Malachim. In other words, everybody who's not a Basar Vadam, every creation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who's not B'Tzala Malachim, so what's, what's, the tzela, what's the nature of B'Tzala Malachim? It's just Chitzoni. So here we have a demand to be very, very Pnimi. But, but even on the outside, the, the point is we are bearers of the Shem Hashem. So the, the, uh, I said this yesterday, you know, I just want to reiterate that if a person is Machziv Tetsura, being that we're created in Salam Alekim, and if, if we don't actually do what we're supposed to do in that capacity, so um, it's actually like the, the, it's a real Chil Hashem. I mean, Chil Hashem in the purest sense of the word, because Chil Hashem means that you're taking something Kodesh and you're making it Chol. The shame is the ultimate articulation of the Kedushas Hashem. Kedushas Hashem. Hashem how he manifests himself in this world. We are the ultimate articulation of the Tzuras Tzuriel Yoyna. That's why we're called Selam Alekim. Imagine Selam Alekim. Here's a sample. Selam Alekim. So, so if we are Machsev Hatsura, it's, it's, it's really not just a case of Chil Hashem, it's the ultimate Chil Hashem. That's what Chil Hashem is. Chil Hashem is we're taking, Chil means you take something which is designated, what is like chul, you take something which is designated for a purpose and then you just use it for chol. That's what, that's what, that's what the word chilo means. If you're machalul hektish, that's what it means. If you take something and I say, hare ze koinam, it's not, hare ze this is for koinam, this is for beda kabais. And then, and then I go and I use it for not beda kabais, it's, that's what chilu means. I'm being mechalal as hakodeshim. I'm taking that which is designated, and I'm using it for chol. Chilu is lashon chol. If I take just the, the, if I take if I take the um, suris adam, which is doyma to the tzurel yoyna, because the only reason why we're doyma to the tzurel yoyna is because we have this job to do, and now I don't do the job. So now not only am I machzivas hatzura. But it's 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 a real chil Hashem 
because because um, because you look you look godly and you didn't do the job. So you've taken that you've taken you've used these kolchos for different purposes. So would that be the definition of the goyim then? They're, they didn't uh, accept the Almachal uh, Shemayim? Why not? Who can redeem themselves, sorry to sound so, uh, <laughs> who, who can redeem themselves by also Zion Mitzvahs and, and, and working for Tikkun Olam. Um, so, okay, so you're part of the staff. You've lowered your own position. And, and we allow them in, anybody can be Maguire. Anybody can be Maguire. Because so we allow them in, but but the point is that if they if if you just people have some people have some tremendous kochos out there, you know, it's um, I mean, in other words, if you if you if you go to a movie, watch television, listen, I mean like people have tremendous amount of talent, tremendous amount of brilliance and tremendous um, so much of it is used not only for the wrong things or unfortunately but but for, for evil. Literally for evil. All of those all of those evil people, Stalin. This is Tel Aviv. This could imagine imagine that the koach uh, of this of this man would have been used Latov, Latov probably would, probably would have brought Mashiach. How, how could it not? And the koach, the koach to get a whole world to follow until you kill what 70, 80 million people. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The koach of the klipa, the koach of the tumah. But it's all Tel Aviv. Bad. Some chosen wrong. Just went the wrong way. That's why I call you know kol agadol mechaver Yitzray. I just want to make a, a, a point here while I'm, while I'm here. Like, uh, the, 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 I bet you yesterday, the, the, there's a mitzvah, a person does a chet, mishpat maves, God forbid. So, um, in some cases, so based in um, hangs him. Clear. So, here the Torah says, you're not allowed to leave him hanging from the tree. For too long, and the reason is ki kilulas. Listen to the words, kilulas elikim toli. What's the pshat kilulas elikim toli? So the words, so elikim toli. Rashi says here. Rashi says here's a here's the ben hamelach. He looks like the melach. It's, it's embarrassing to the melach. It's a chilas shem. Well, what's kilulas elikim toli? Kilulas means. Um, it's it's the it's the tzura of Hakadosh Baruch Hu that has been abused. That's what klala means to abuse, make kal, to make kal, kill us elokim toloi, and take it down by by looking at it. You're making Hakadosh Baruch Hu kal by by being mavaza his tzura. True, this person chose wrong. True, the person chose wrong. True, the person deserves to die. Has happened what once every seventy years? Such a thing could have happened. Um, it didn't happen often. It was like a big deal if it happened. Um, I, was, I was reading the history of the of the uh, the Goyim Lahabdol of and uh, I was in Venice a couple of weeks ago. So they have a place called Saint Marco Square. So there's the place where they used to uh, kill people. <laughs> a certain spot uh, in the uh, church there that uh, it's a, a whole Kabbalistic thing. It's the ninth pillar. You know, it's a, it's a nice pillar for one side, the fourth pillar for the other side. That's a cheshpin that uh, that they were doing tzicha from this. Uh, well, what did he kill a person for? For being Jewish, for instance, <laughs> those, those those kind of chantayim. So the the the, the derech of hariga was that you um, you know the thing was exactly I think uh, was something like uh, eleven meters or something high, and you tie a rope around his neck and you throw him off the thing, and it's good you. Kacha that uh, you know that he dies of strangulation before it's the, the group. So I was just reading the, um, the the thing. I don't usually go to church. I, I, <laughs> the reason I went there is because uh, um, because it, it was there that there was the uh, very infamous burning of uh, of this of the Rambam and Shas and, and, and this place. I just wanted to say like the Kalbali in this uh, exact spot. But anyways, I was reading the plaque over there about how they used to kill people from this spot. So how often did they kill people? You know, 10, 11 times a day <laughs> in a good season. <laughs> 10, 11 times a day. It was like, it was like an unbelievable thing. You know? but, uh, and then they used to keep them hanging there, all of them, for, for like a week. That was the, um, 
that was the uh, chashmut. So uh, you, you can understand where the chumash is coming from. You know that loisel if lasay aleitz kekilu lasay lakim totally. But I, ju- I just, uh, if, if you'll allow me to make a quick uh, political point here, that, um, it just seems to me, it bothers me. Like uh, you know, there, there are people in Klai Yisrael that do very bad things. There are Rishonim bad people. Um, child molestation, uh, um, abuse, terrible. Uh, if, they're, if they're guilty, if they're, if they're guilty, I mean, in my opinion, uh, you know, throw them to the dogs. I don't have any problem reporting them, sending them to jail. I don't have any problem. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what, that's what Chazal say. That's what the vice say. I don't have any problem with that. What I have a problem with is, okay, let's say after you did that, it's like to, to hack again and again and another blog and another blog like you can't like like what's like like why it becomes after day two it goes into the gender of it goes out of expose to the gender of Khil Hashem. Kikilo Salikim Tully. It's Mamash, you know the the hetter to ruin this guy's wife and family and, and everything. You did it, finish, throw him to the dogs, throw get you know, like let him go to hell. I understand all that. I have no problem with that at all. But like why over and over and over again? I, I just I keep on reading like you know, the, the, the latest one. Another blog, another blog with his name and this and the, where where does this come to, to, to Jews to to to, to keep on going over and over and over again. Look, he finished, you prosecuted him, you got him out of the way, um, let it go down in, in record that, that this person should never be the, in a position of responsibility or connected to children or women or men or whatever is whatever the problem is. But why, why, why hock and hock and hock and hock? Like it's just, so he hates a her. When he has he hates a her, but I think it's over. I, I think it's like, oh, you did what you did. You did what you had to do. It's a very painful thing to, 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 to do this. But don't, don't blog about it. <laughs> don't blog about it. Why? And so what's the, and, and it's, it's a love. I think it's a love of the Torah of Dikim Lassam Lakim Tzolik. Here you have somebody who, who particularly you know, a rabbi or something like that, you know, who, who people are looking at as thought, thought that he was the Tzura, Doibel Tzura Yoyna, violated that privilege, didn't do it, has to be removed from that situation. It has to be hung. We're talking about a rotzeach if you're hanging somebody You know, we're talking about the worst kind of people. So, but, but, but nevertheless, people are looking at it and saying, "Kila zeli kim tali." They're attributing it back to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That's what people are doing, and that is what people are doing. So I'm just making my uh, for itself. For itself, it's himself. It's a tikkun. Yes. Yeah. Well, don't worry about it. Huh? Don't no, worry I... about it. <laughs> <laughs> But we got his ticket. Yeah. Look, I, I, I'm Baruch Hashem, like Niki Kapayim, we were I never was never in that position, but I'm not going to hope ever be in that position. But uh, and, I, and I'm careful about these things to a crazy fault, you know. But they, like, you know somebody comes to see me, I open the windows, the doors, the, this, the camera, like everything. But, I, I'm not, but I'm just saying, like, think about it, you know, how humiliating it is already. So, you know, to, to be humiliated. I have, no, I, have no, I have no problem with the humiliation. I don't even have a problem with it's hurting the family. Because it's a good Baruch Hu's cheshmer, it's his cheshmer. It's not, you know, uh, it's a kaschah to haim rabba. Like every time a base to, would, would, uh, would incarcerate somebody or goes up, would hurt the family. I mean, you know, what are you supposed to do? That's, that's the kaddish Baruch Hu's cheshmer. But, uh, but what, what's all, that's what's mutter. That's what you have to do with great pain once in 70 years. But, but to, to, to hack on it is kikila selikim tole. That's what the terror says. You're not allowed to do. So it's in a minute it's done. It's done. It's, uh, put it someplace in, in, you know, in the base Hadinisa, you know, But it's, once it's done, it's done. And, and, but it became like a mitzvah. I think it's somewhat a reaction to people that are trying to hide behind it. Okay. We don't, we don't, I agree, I agree, but uh, why are we reacting instead of going OP Duster? Right, there's such big cover up that, uh, that this becomes like, well, like, yeah, no, uh, there's MS. Uh, yeah, so what's good is good and what's bad is bad, that's all I'm saying. Shariqir et Salam Vadamu Salam let's finish up. How do you hang pool, lice up? What good is it, he says, if a person has 
all of the abilities to be the Tzura HaYoyna, which is the Sphiros tree. Tmus Tavnis Evaro, which is the right hand is Chesed, the left hand is Gvur, etc. Tmus Tavnis Evaro. So your Moshe, I'm going to give you a job here to keep on being Medayik. What's Tzelev or what's Tmus? Ubepulais, meaning Midos, what good is all that? Ubepulais, lo yistam el koinoi. There is, you have the, you have the outside, but you don't have the inside. Lefichach, and here you have it, mevorish. Chaim, roish yistam el pulas hakeser. We have to really look at ourselves in terms of understanding the keser. Shein yud gimel midos sharachim el yonois, vermuzos beside absukim. Mikel Kamoicha. Now this is this is just a, a there there's there's thirteen midos that Moshe Rabbeinu was Megala in the Torah. Hashem Hashem Kel Rachel Mechan and Erech Abayim Reb Chesed etc. Those are thirteen midos of Hashem. What was he? What was he being Megala there? He was saying Takarish Baruch Hu. this is who you are. But this is what you stated, or what I know, Baruch HaKodesh or Benavua, is the uh, covenantal bylaws of the creation. This is how you're being manhig the Bria. So if this is the way you're being manhig the Bria, why aren't you forgiving the people for, for the Egel Hazal? That was the context. So Hashem Hashem Kel Rachel V'chanon represents 13 vetoes. Um, they're reiterated over and over again in different languages by different Nevi'im throughout. Um, so Moshe Rabbeinu said it that way, Hashem Hashem Kel Rachel Mechano. The Tomer Dvar could have been written on the Yud Gimel Midas Harachamim. Um, instead, for some interesting reason, he, he chose the, he went all the way to Sefer Micha, which is uh, already towards the end of Tanach, and there uh, Micha said the 13 Midas, Mi Kel Kamocha, No Se Avon Ve'oiver El Pesha, he was talking to Hashem and supplicating Hashem very much in the same way that Moshe Rabbeinu did, but he was different Lashonis. And, and his Lashon wasn't Hashem Hashem Kel Rachum, it was Mikel Kamocha. So as we'll learn, you'll see that it's Makbil, the Yud Gimel Midas Harachim is totally Makbil to the Mikel Kamocha. But this is the puzzle that Tamar Dvar chose to use. So the, um, I, th I think the Mekubalim explained that uh, Hashem Hashem is, is um, Moichen Gedolim and Mikhail Kamayz and Moichen Tanan, meaning one is, let's put it in um, easier words, one's Isarusa de Lelo, one's Isarusa de Satan. Is that easier words? <laughs> in other words, they're coming from two different places, we'll explain. But the Mikhail Kamocha of it is the, where, where he's um, closer down to us anyway. A Mikhail Kamocha, Micha said, Noise Avain, we're going to, each one of these, the first Mita you'll see is Mikhail Kamocha, the second Mita of Hashem is Noise Avain, Oiver Al Pesha, etc. Im Kain, Shibroi Shitim Senu, Boy, Yud Gimel Midais Ele, Baachshav Nefarish, Oisen Apulai Shud Gimel, Shibroi Shitiyano, Boy. Now, Boy means the person. Now, let's try to understand the 13 Midos of Akarish Baruch Hu that he used to create. The world. This is his Hanhaga in the Hashkacha practice of the world. Therefore, as his executives, we have this 13 Midas. So we have this within us, in other words, Kale, Rafa, Machanun, Ere, Chapayim, Rav Chesed, we have this. Even Kale, we have these We have this all within us. And so we have to understand them about ourselves and then understand a Kodesh Baruch. We don't understand about a Kodesh Baruch and then understand ourselves. But it's all one thing because this is the, uh, the Tikkun of the world. Thank you very much. So tomorrow we'll do well.